Welcome back. This is the third video of section 3.1 in which I'm going to establish some fundamental properties of compact spaces. First result, every compact metric space is bounded. Now, we cannot formulate this for a general topological space because there's no concept of boundedness in a topological space. Okay, why this is true? I go back to the definition. So, in particular, fix a point A in X and cons consider the collection of all balls or open balls of center A and radius and variable radius R positive. So, as you know from uh, chapter 1, the union of all these balls is equal to X. So, compactness tells me that only finitely many of these balls cover uh, this space. So X is the finite union of balls of center A and reduce AK, uh, RK. And as you know, a finite union of, this is an increasing sequence. Uh, so the union of these balls is just a ball of center A and radi radius the maximum of this radii. Okay, so the whole space is actually a ball and therefore it's bounded. Okay, next result, very important fundamental. The image of a compact space under a continuous map is compact. Okay, and this is does not depend on the concept of distance. So this is true for any topological space. So compactness, so uh, compactness is conserved by continuity. So in particular, it's conserved by homeomorphisms. Okay, so we say that compactness is a topological property. So if two spaces are homeomorphic and one is compact, the other is necessarily compact. If one of them is not compact, the other is necessarily not compact. Yeah. Here's the proof. So consider a continuous map from a compact topological space X into another topological space Y. And you have to prove that F of X is compact. So we can use lemma 3.2. And so we, we consider an arbitrary covering uh, of f of x by open subsets of the bigger space y. Okay, so f of x is contained in the union. Therefore, when I take the inverse image, the inverse image of f of x is just x, as you know from chat theory, and I can, can interchange union and f minus 1. So x is the union of f minus 1 of O lambda. Okay, and actually we have equality here because f minus 1 of O lambda is contained in X, so the union is contained in X, so we have equality. So we have now a covering of X by open subsets of X, and now I use compactness. Now why these sets are open? Because F is continuous. Okay, so O lambda is, continue, is open and F continuous, so by definition this means that F minus 1 of O lambda is an open set. So I have a covering of X by open subsets of X, and compactness tells me that I can extract from this covering a finite subcovering so I can write x as a union of uh, f minus 1 of O lambda i. And we are almost done. Now I take the direct image. So the direct image of the union is the union of the direct images. So I can interchange. And f of f minus 1 of a set is contained in the set. And we have equality if f is surjective. So f of x is contained in this finite union. So I started from from an open cover and an arbitrary of covering of f of x by open subsets of y, and I proved that only finitely many of them would do. So I can throw the remaining. So this proves that by lemma 3.2, f of x is compact. Okay. As a corollary, we have the fundamental extreme value theorem that you probably know from first year, but you know it for a map from in a closed interval AB into R. But here we can work in, in an arbitrary topological space. So if X is compact from X to R, if X is compact and F is continuous from X to R, then F is bounded and achieves its bounds. So, or if you like, a real valued continuous map has a maximum value and a minimum value on a compact space. Okay, so this is so important. Okay, so this is a consequence of just the previous result. So if X is compact, according to the previous result, F of X is compact. Okay, but it's a compact subset of R. But we said that a comp so R is a metric space. And so uh, 
it, a compact metric. So f of x is a compact metric space, and therefore it's bounded. And it's closed as well, because we know that uh, compact sets of a metric space are closed in the set. So f of x is both closed and bounded. So what does it mean it's bounded? It means that it has an upper bound and a lower bound. So it has a sup and an inf. But we know from chapter 1 that the inf and the sup belongs to the closure of the set. But since the set is closed, then the inf and the sup belong to f of x. Okay, so this means that supremum is equal to f of something of some value d, and the same thing for the infimum. Okay, so that's it. So sup of f of x is usually denoted by supremum of f of x over x and capital X. The infimum, same notation for similar notation for the infimum. Okay, so this is a, a fundamental result linking compactness and continuity. Okay, it's very important when an optimize it's a fundamental result in optimization. When you want to search a minimum, you need to first really need to ensure that it exists. And if we remove the assumptions of continuity or compactness, the result need not be true. And I gave two examples last year actually. Okay, so we need both conditions. Okay, and the last result of this video is a criterion permitting to, uh, so it's a case, it illustrates a case where continuity of the inverse follows from, uh, is automatic. So if you have a continuous bijection between uh, metric spaces and if uh, x is compact, then f is a homeomorphism, which means that f minus 1 is automatically continuous. In the previous chapter, we gave an example where a continuous bijection is not a homeomorphism. Okay, this is why we need to include the continuity of the inverse and the definition of a homeomorphism. But there are many cases, very interesting cases, where continuity of the inverse is automatic. This is an example here. Okay, So, why this is true? Because to prove that f minus 1 is continuous, what does it mean that f minus 1 is continuous? It means that the inverse image of f minus 1 of a closed set is a closed set. Or, but the inverse image of, the, of f minus 1 is just f, because f is a bijection. So it's enough to prove that f is a closed map, or maps closed sets into closed sets. Okay? So pick a, a closed set A in x. Since x is compact, According to a previous result, A itself is compact. But since F conserves compactness, this is Proposition 3.2, F of A is compact. Okay? But by Proposition 3.3, because we live in a metric space, F of A is closed. Okay? So the direct image of a closed set is closed, and this precisely means that F minus 1 is continuous. Okay? So this concludes the video. and section 3.1 as well. So thank you for attention and see you next time.